Today's episode is on the famous cemetery where drug lords are buried and living ones have their graves for when they die. It is located in Sinaloa, Mexico. Many notorious Mexican drug kingpins are laid to rest there, while some alive have their mausoleums built for when they die. Want to know more about this cemetery that houses drug traffickers' remains? Watch until the end to learn everything about how this cemetery came to be and the people buried there. Before we begin, kindly hit the like button and subscribe for more amazing content like the one you're about to watch. Jardines del Humaya is a private cemetery outside Culiacan City in the Mexican state of Sinaloa. It was established in 1969 using funds from the wealthiest families in the area. It was a private cemetery for the rich people of Culiacan City, especially its professionals. However, it became a place where the drug traffickers built their graves for their families to mourn. Jardines del Humaya is known as a multi-million dollar cemetery in Sinaloa, Mexico. Over time, Sinaloa, especially Culiacan, became known for its drug-related activities and violence. It is also the birthplace of the infamous Sinaloa cartel known as the most notorious narco-trafficking organization in the world. In a bid to flaunt their wealth and secure a befitting place to be buried, after their death, drug traffickers, especially those from the Sinaloa cartel, bought lands of the cemetery and built luxurious mausoleums. Jardines del Humaya has gained notoriety for its lavish and unique mausoleums built for deceased cartel members. These burial chambers resemble real-life houses and associated luxury enjoyed by these drug lords before their deaths. The opulent mausoleum has become the symbol of the narco culture that has spread in recent times. It adds a religious perspective to an underworld that has also inspired music, television shows, movies, and fashion. The cemetery also depicts tales of horror, especially those surrounding those buried there. An example is Hector Luis Palma Salazar's alias El Guero story. An early associate of El Chapo during the 1980s and 1990s, Salazar's wife and kids were murdered by Rafael Enrique Clavel, a drug trafficker and former Salazar's associate, Salazar's wife, Guadalupe, had her head severed and sent to Hector in prison. His children Natalie and Jesus were drugged and pushed off a bridge near the Colombian border and filmed in a video to Salazar in prison. To honor them, Salazar built a small tomb on the edge of Jardines del Humaya for them. He had them depicted in a painting as angels seated in heaven and hung at a grave. Jardines del Humaya tombs are personalized mansion-like structures looking like parishes or churches on the outside. However, on the inside, they are villa-like with well-furnished living rooms and party rooms. On entering the cemetery, the first rows of graves near the entrance are modest as they belong to professional Sinaloa citizens. These people had nothing to do with the drug trade, but their affluence allowed them to be buried in Jardines del Humaya. Many of these burial chambers have different building types with various exterior decoration styles. One mausoleum looks like a chapel with white columns, angels on stained glass windows, and a statue of Jesus Christ standing on the roof. Some resemble small modern apartments with glass doors, stairs leading to a second floor, and living rooms with couches for mourners. During Christmas, some chambers are adorned with Christmas trees. There is a chamber with fort-like towers and another with roof terrace with fans. One chamber is a Taj Mahal copy, complete with air conditioning units and windows in the shape of the cross, on the side of this replica of Islam's most famous piece of architecture. A chamber which holds the remains of a Sinaloa drug cartel hitman has a bulletproof glass door across that lights up in the dark on top of a dome. There are also surveillance cameras pointing toward the entrance. Inside the chamber, there's a glass case which holds four small swords. The graves in these chambers are designed in a kitschy Italian Baroque style or the minimalist variant. Modern, straightforward, with lots of glass and concrete. At night, the lights automatically activate outside several tombs as well as the alarm systems to prevent trespassers. Many of these mausoleums are equipped with luxurious furnishings, including Wi-Fi, plasma TVs, parks, and living suites. There are even party rooms and generally expensive interior designs in the burial chambers. There are larger-than-life paintings of the deceased or not-yet-deceased hung inside the mausoleums. These paintings are framed by garlands of flowers and portraits of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Guadalupe, the patron saint of Mexico. In the multi-story buildings, spiral staircases lead to home cinemas and marble-fitted kitchens. Some chambers have air conditioning that is activated for 24 hours. The various chambers in the cemetery are built and designed to showcase the lavish life of its occupants. It's also the place for those that survived them to remember how they lived. It's why several intricate designs are added to ensure it represents the occupants 
Some chambers have religious significance to show that the drug lord had a religious status that is upheld even in death. It's also a place where the drug lords can continue their show of power and competition even after death. As the larger and more expensive mausoleums, the more impactful and powerful its occupant seems. The chambers are constructed for the deceased family to enjoy a good time when they meet and not merely a place to mourn and pray. It's why it has areas where people can cook, sleep, celebrate, and indulge in luxuries. Many of the buildings in the cemetery cost almost half a million dollars, and the ones of the most famous members of the Sinaloa cartel are called El Panteón. The mausoleums were constructed to exalt the dead, hence the fortune spent on their creation. The littlest grave in the cemetery is said to cost more than an average home in Culiacan. One of the most famous graves in the Panteon belongs to Mexican drug kingpin Arturo Beltran Leva, who died in 2009 during a large-scale shootout with the Mexican army. He's known to have split his cartel from the Sinaloa clan after he assumed the cartel betrayed his brother by giving him up to the authorities. Arturo Beltran Leva was known by the nickname El Jefe de Jefes, the boss of the bosses. He built a mausoleum to be buried in, in the form of a fortress for 650,000 US dollars. Despite this enormous amount of money spent on Arturo's mausoleum, the burial chamber is a modest one. Close to Leva's fortress is the more contemporary resting place of Ignacio Nacho Coronel, known as King of the Crystal. He was a top-ranking Sinaloa cartel member who controlled the cocaine trade from Colombia to Mexico to the United States for the organization. According to the British Daily Mail, Nacho's chamber costs about 450,000 US dollars. The mausoleum has an automatic alarm system that sends videos of any intruders to the smartphones of the other members of the cartel when they try to break into his grave. The burial chamber of Inés Calderón, an infamous drug boss and organized crime figure in the 1970s and 1980s, cost about 550,000 US dollars. It's well furnished with luxurious decorations and has an extravagant dome, which is guarded by security personnel. El Chapo, the notorious former leader of the Sinaloa cartel, extradited to the United States, also built a burial chamber for himself and his four brothers in the cemetery. The mausoleum complex is said to cost about 1.2 million US dollars. It is known as the most expensive chamber in the burial site. El Chapo is the only one who is still alive of the five Guzman brothers and will be buried in the last free grave once he's dead. Presently, the infamous narco-trafficker is still living and serving a life sentence in a maximum security prison in New York. Notable burials at Jardines de Humaya, Jose Rodrigo Arechiga Gamboa, 1980-2020, drug lord, Marcos Arturo Arturo Beltran Leva, 1967-2009, drug lord. Ines El Ingeniero Calderón Quintero, 1954-1988, organized crime figure. Amado Carillo Fuentes, 1954-1997, drug lord. Manuel Cluthier, 1934-1989, politician. Ignacio Coronel Villarreal, 1954-2010, drug lord. Manuel Torres Felix, 1958-2012, drug lord. What are your thoughts on Jardines del Humaya? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Did you enjoy the video? Like and comment below. Do not forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You'll find our social media handles in the description below.